The next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir, baby, on the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. My sister Journey Montana back in the building. Hello. Hey. Crazy. Last time we was with each other was on Zoom. I know. You were in Atlanta. I was in LA. Oh, you were in LA? I thought you were living in Atlanta. Crazy. You sure? No, I was in LA. You were in LA? Okay. I was my bad. I was filming. The um the Netflix show, yeah. right? Uh, 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 um I literally wrote All it down American. too. All yeah, American. It was, so yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. it was like so long ago. It was like right when I like my first time going out there to shoot. Really? Mm -hmm. During the pandemic too? That was literally like twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. It was right, that. yeah. That was cool. Now, I wanna find the exact date because I actually I was watching some of our old interview. Um, well, I'm gonna find the I'm exact really, date. Oh my gosh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was uh, 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 March 26, 2021. So it was actually like right before I actually started doing it in person again, also. Like, mm. I think I started doing it in person like two months later. Yeah. Crazy. But that does make sense because All American came out a little bit after that. The, yeah. the scenes that, I was watching some of the scenes that you were in. All American has yeah. been one of the shows that's been on like my Netflix watch list for. Mm -hmm. Ever, but I'm always here. I never have time to watch TV anymore. But yeah. congratulations on that. Thank you. How Thank was your you. experience uh, filming that during uh, that time? Because I'm, I know during that time is they were still pretty strict about yeah, like the it was regulations. So, it was so strict. We had to get tested like before we the day before we had to go to set okay. and before we left we had to get tested for the next time we come back. And it was so crazy because I was even on set and a lot of the time. They were telling me like, oh, I wish you came not during the pandemic because then you could bring family and stuff. But I had to like come by myself. Like I couldn't really? bring anybody. I couldn't do like it was it's very, very regulated. Like your even your trailers like sealed before you come in there. Like nobody can go inside. And you breathe can't the air. Wear your yeah, like it's like <laughs> concealed air. Like you can't. Yeah, it's like it's very they're very, you know, on it. Was there ever like an onset COVID scare? Um, I was told that before I got there, somebody got sick, and then it just like pushed production back okay. for like six weeks because they just had to stop. It was really yeah, they're, it's really intense. But I think that it's starting to settle down because they just like kind of stopped with all the extreme mm. COVID like protocols mm. in like the film world. They're very serious about it. <laughs> really, that, to this day, they're still serious about it like that. Yeah, it's like like I mean, even it, even with like auditioning, they don't do in person auditions anymore. Like they after COVID, they like completely stopped. Everything wow. is like self tape and online, like Zoom, like everything. It's it's so crazy how it's affected the the film industry. I feel like you can't always get a good judge of a person on Zoom though. I know I miss in person auditions so much. Cause I feel like it's well, not that it's easier, cause auditioning for something is like hard no matter what you're yeah. doing it for. But like I don't know. I feel like you're able to like sh not only show a little bit of more of your personality, like the character you're trying to portray, mm -hmm. but like also you could like you don't get to build the bond with exactly people. Like, like you can't joke around with them. And exactly. Yeah, you can't make them like you. Like even I had an audition. I did it, and even most of the times with in-person auditions, you don't even just say it once. Like you don't even do it once. Like you'll do it, and they'll give you notes, and then you'll do it again, and then like maybe they'll give you a different role, or like they'll have you audition for somebody else or like it's more interactive but like now it's just like record it send it in that's it crazy i know so how did all american come about for you i did a self-tape <laughs> <laughs> just like that i did a i did a self-tape and yeah. i remember when i read it i was like oh i was like i got this like i was like I, and it was i know that sounds like typical people say that but like literally when i read it i was like oh this is me like like i 100 percent have this and then i sent it in forgot about it and then, like, a week later, they were like, we need you in L.A. right now. That's fire. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, but it was cool. Congrats. Mm -hmm. do you have, how you. much do you resonate with your character? Um, I resonate a lot with her, like, control freak aspect where, like, mm -hmm. she knows what she wants to do with her life. And she knows, like, what career path she wants. And, and she's willing to do kind of anything to get there. Right. Um, in the way, like, and that's kind of where the... the drug addict aspect comes into play because um, she starts taking drugs to mm -hmm. be on her A-game with, like, dancing and stuff. And, you know, she's young, so she's doing it the wrong way, but it's kind of where I relate in that, like, really serious about my craft and, like, by any means possible sometimes, but not in that way. Not in the drug way, <laughs> yeah. okay? You know what I'm saying? But, but in the, like, you know... I'm gonna get it done. Like she had the right reasons, just like the wrong method. Method. Yeah. 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 So is there more? Is there more in store? Because like I said, I, I, it's been in my watch list, but I want to ask: Is there more in store for you with that? Or I mean, I don't know. I'm. I don't know. The writers just 
be doing their thing. Okay. Sometimes they'll throw in a throw in a little plot, but we'll, know, we'll see. We'll hope for the best for you. Yeah, thank you. And it's cool because I feel like once you're on Netflix too, like you're kind of in that ecosystem. And I started noticing yeah. that like a little bit more like as a, I was actually just scrolling on Netflix aimlessly this weekend. And I'm like, oh, I remember this guy from there and this girl from there because like they're on the, the pictures mm -hmm, and I'm like yeah. that. I'm like, oh, okay. And so like as I'm scrolling through Netflix and preparing for this interview, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool for Journey because like I feel like, like I said, once you're in the Netflix mm -hmm. ecosystem, there definitely is at least like one or two other possibilities of like other productions you'll be in yeah. one way or another. Mm -hmm. Cause, Cause I see people repeating themselves a lot on Netflix. Yeah, ex it's the casting directors usually. Like they, they have the same like maybe like twenty casting directors that are mm. like doing their thing. So like most of my auditions, it's like the same casting director. Like oh, I see this role. Like I have yeah. people that I already know. Like they just know of you, so they'll just like they got audition a group chat. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In their yeah, in their head, kind of like something like that. It's it's kind of that vibe though, like where it's like once you're on a casting director's radar, like that's really good. So yeah, like I I really um am a big fan of the casting director who cast me in in All American. Have there been any shows that you ha have done that you haven't gotten? Oh yeah, a lot of things. Um, I auditioned for BMF. Okay. I auditioned for Did you Pretty Little for Liars. I think I might, I may have. I feel I like you should have auditioned for I may have. Even if you didn't get it, I feel like <laughs> I could have seen you in the Wu-Tang show. Maybe, maybe, at some point. You said Pretty Little Liars too? Yeah, I auditioned okay. for, the, for the reboot. The, yeah, the reboot, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of things. I, do, I audition a lot. Like, it's a lot of stuff. But I feel like when it's the right thing, like, you know, it What was the sense. BMF role? That you auditioned for? It was the little sister. Oh, okay. But, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, a little, <laughs> it's a little too young pulling for me, I think. They saw it, they are like, we're, we filmed this in a year, by the by <laughs> the time she starts filming, she's gonna look older than she does yeah, now. Just, it's a, it's I just feel like I'm a, I give a little bit too girl. Even though on All American I play a 15 year old, Right. It was just a little. I think she was like eleven or twelve. I was yeah, like, I don't know if you can yeah, do that. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. It's like high, you like I, like you could play high school right now, but you'd have to be yeah. like a couple years younger to play like what, like that, middle school. Middle school, yeah, middle like school. I, yeah, that's a, that's a bit much. But I, I think it's cool how you're able to do like the acting. Your TikTok does extremely well too. Like I remember mm -hmm. like during the pandemic, I would see like a lot of your TikToks would be going viral <laughs> all the time. Yeah, and it's like obviously, of course, you got the music side of things. So it's like cool how there's not just like one side that you lean on the most, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, music is a passion. That's why we're yeah. here today. <laughs> but like, I find it cool how you're able to like kind of bounce between all of these things because it's not easy. Yeah, it's really just about building like the brand mm -hmm. as a whole, like from all fronts and just keeping it, you know, together in all areas. You know, like even there was one point where even artists talk about it all the time, where it's like. Everybody's like, get on TikTok, get on TikTok. I remember when, like, the pandemic hit. It was like, get on TikTok, get right. on TikTok, get on TikTok. And I was like, you know what? I'm tired of hearing this. <laughs> Let me get my ass on TikTok. Because I'm the type of person, like, I don't like hearing things more than once. So I'll just get it out the way. Like, even this summer, like, I was hearing a lot, like, you need to be outside. And I was like, bet. And I was outside. Or, like, get on TikTok. Okay, I bet. I'm going to be doing that. Or, like, I'll just take, I'll just take it in. Just, you know. Go for it. Just go for so it. So just like trying to keep it together in all angles. Mm. So that was like me tapping in with like the TikTok and even I do this thing now where it's like write a song with me in 10 minutes mm -hmm. and like that's still bringing it back to the music and like, you know, giving them something. I would say it's like a spider web. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you're at the center. You always got to bring it back to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With the, and the music's been moving lately too. Mm -hmm. Obviously began playing on the stations. Like I, I've been so uh, happy seeing that. Like I, obviously... I also love seeing you out with like Fergie and mm -hmm. things like, and 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 that crowd too. Like, it it feels like because I felt like when when you were filming All American, right? You felt mm -hmm. so far away. Yeah. And then I was now like, it's kind of like you feel. I, if, when I see it, it feels like you're back in the ecosystem yeah. of like the music over here mm -hmm. too. And I think that's what was really cool. Cause I was like, oh shit, I'm starting to see Journey out like more over here with like you know the New York artists and kind of getting back into that mm -hmm. groove, which I didn't see while you were there. But at the time, obviously. I didn't know that you were filming all. Yeah, it was like I wasn't home. I was like, okay, I'm home now. Let me, let me, let me tap in. Let me, you know. Right. I don't even remember what excuse you gave me for why you were out there, but you didn't say what you, were filming <laughs> all, you didn't say you were filming yeah. all American. No, I couldn't. I couldn't say anything. Because bad was decisions like, was like the song that was moving too, and I thought that that was really cool. Mm -hmm, yeah, bad decisions. Bad decisions has been doing very well, which is cool. Um, it's at like what 1.4 million on all platforms now, which is insane. But I'm really happy about that that song did you know that song was gonna do that honestly yeah like when i <laughs> when i because it was like i did it kind of fresh mm. i i probably recorded it maybe 
like a month before we dropped it. Like it was really like, oh, I recorded this. Okay, I want to put this out like now. Yeah. And I just heard it, and it was just like, oh yeah, this is one of those. This is one of them. Mm-hmm. It just hit. It just hit different. So I was like, yeah, I probably knew before. How long you had that one done? Um, well, I recorded it. I recorded it in probably like an hour. Okay. And yeah, we. The only reason why it took a month to come out is because we just do it in advance. So we had it recorded, waiting to come out for maybe like a week, where Damn. we were like, we decided, okay, we're dropping this. <laughs> it took like a week to decide, really. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fire. So do you think uh, you're still independent right now? Yeah, I am. Are you? Are, do you think that's gonna happen this year for you? Like getting signed? Probably. Yeah. You hoping so? Knock yeah. on wood. Huh? <laughs> Knock on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. We'll they gotta see. talk right though, right? Yeah, you know, if it makes sense. Mm. I'm not rushing into anything too headstrong, but like when it makes sense, you know. Right. I don't know if you peeped this, but I had um, and I'm gonna bring this up with some other R&B artists I had this week because I have a few. But I had Division up here, mm-hmm. um, not too long ago. Drake's oh. Drake's artist, um, and oh. um, we were talking about the state of R&B, right? Mm-hmm. And something that they were talking about because obviously, um, Division is a producer and a male R&B artist, mm-hmm. and they're talking about how. Um, I think the quote was that women in R and B have more to talk about and more things to that they can open up about and more things like that than men yeah. do. Yeah. And I want to get your I want to get hmm. people's opinion on this because I think that that's a great conversation. Hmm. But they but also I said mean, that. Go ahead. But I mean, like, who's making these rules? Right. You know what I mean? Like, that I feel like that might be the difference where I, I think. Guys, I feel like there aren't as many male R&B artists that are like, you know, it's always kind of been a female thing, kind of like how rap is male driven and like, you know, whatever. And even though that's changing right now, but, you know, I feel like that might be the difference. Like a guy who just says whatever, like a a, a male R&B artist that kind of just breaks that mold. Like, cause who says that mm. a guy can't talk about the crazy stuff? that a girl was talking about. Like, I just made this song the other day and it was like about a groupie. And it was like, well, if you really like me, then cry. (laughs) Like, get on your knees and cry for me and tell me that you like, like, it was like a little toxic or whatever. And it's just like, who says a guy can't make a song kind of flipping that or like having that same type of energy. So like, I don't know. I think, and then that's great that you said that because then the second part of what we spoke about Mm was um, about how they they how they explained it was like you know guys always have to portray themselves as or they feel like they have to portray themselves as like the hero or this this and that instead of being more vulnerable and what they spoke that album that they put out which i don't know if you listen to it it's mm-hmm. really good it's called welcome uh working on my karma yeah um it, it it opens up about how like guys always aren't on that pedestal like there we have issues we have things that we go through and yeah. we're not always the hero sometimes mm-hmm. we're the villain yeah and like and they and they Try to open up that conversation a little bit more with that project, okay, which kind of goes okay. with what you're saying yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, yeah, that's dope. I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to. That. I used to listen to Division like all throughout high school. Like, yeah. I am a, I'm a supporter. I'm a fan. But they're incredible. Um, yeah, I I think that that is the difference. Like breaking that that like mold and that like kind of just box. And that I feel like that's kind of what what it needs to happen in the music industry, like breaking all of these boxes and, and breaking all of these rules that who came up with? Like who came up with these rules and these these things that draw the line between being comfortable and being uncomfortable? Like, you know. Right. Like I think of um, how they, like, you know, the, the, the biggest song off that project is uh, the If I Get Caught, mm-hmm. which is about one, <laughs> like being open about po- cheating. Yeah. And being open about having those conversations about, whether it's infidelity or you know feeling certain X, Y, and Z in a relationship, um, and I think those are important conversations to have. Yeah, I, I love that song. I played it for some. <laughs> me, me and Shay, no, Shay knows. I play that song every time I get in the car. Really? Like if I get caught cheating, everybody and the girls, the girls are really upset. Mm-hmm. He has the girls very upset about that one. He has the girls very upset. Yo, Will, why are you yelling when you come up in my studio, bro? What's up with you? <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, the girl. Uh, but I, the girls were upset about that the one. The girls were mad. They were but very upset. I feel like once they explained the meaning behind that record, it's like you can't really be entirely upset because it's about opening a deeper conversation. And that's what they wanted to do with it at the end of the day too. They wanted to get people talking about it. That song is toxic. 
I don't know. Let me. I no, don't you know. Watch, what, do me a favor, good. Journey. Journey. Do me a favor, John. Yo, do me a favor. Watch he the watch. Said, watch how the, you gonna let one little fuck mess all this up? What? Watch the interview. That's watch, crazy. Watch the interview. Watch the interview. Watch the interview. Do That's me a favor. Watch, watch the interview. Watch them explain it, <laughs> and then you'll have a different outlook on it. Cause I thought I said that to them, and they were like, No, 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 no. And then they broke it down to me, and I was like, All right. My response to that song is bad decisions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but that's I mean, good because you see they made you react in a certain yeah, way. Yeah, I think that is great. Up. I think that is great. It's just, it's just, yeah, just opening up the audience a little bit, and it might make women a little bit more mad. And I feel like women might be the the bigger consumer of R and B. To well, I wouldn't say that, but no, I think women are definitely the bigger consumer. Yeah, of R like, I mean, men listen like we. I listen to R and B, but like obviously. I don't feel like I would listen to R&B as much as, you know, if I had a significant other, my significant yeah, other. Yeah, you, know you know, yeah, I, I feel like that too. Like, it's definitely like a woman, a more women-driven audience. So, like, nice. that's why probably guys feel like they have to have the savior confidence to appease the woman. <laughs> because, you know, like I said, the if I get got cheated and it pissed off the girls, <laughs> like, the girls was very upset. Because the guys were on TikTok in front of McDonald's singing it. In a choir. I ain't gonna lie, that was my shit. Like, what? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe it's about getting the guys more tapped in with R&B. Right. Maybe that's the agenda. But it all, yeah, but it also, and then also kind of flipping the script on the, 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 um, the quote unquote, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like, thinking that guys have to be always portray themselves in R&B as like the savior, you know, that savior complex. Savior complex. Yes. And also now, like, flipping that and being like, okay, but like, you can be vulnerable. You can talk about Gene. You can talk about this, X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z, and whatnot, and it be, and it's okay to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, because stuff girls too. are listening to it, and girls are like, right. Niggas ain't shit, you know. <laughs> and then there's some guys out there who might relate to yeah, it. Yeah, and... but guys, guys get real mad at some of my music sometimes. Really? Like, almost every time I'm in the studio or I'm recording or something, the engineer, somebody in the room is like, kind of attacked but like girls don't <laughs> girls are like yeah but the guys are like i don't know well, like I mean, you know they have something personal to work out yeah they they're a little bothered like i'm like well, if the shoe fit, i wasn't talking about you but if the shoe fits they got their own demons they got to fight with <laughs> yeah yeah definitely but it's it's definitely it's I, I just feel like it's a touchy thing with with just audience driven like women are going to relate to the Talking about the the men bashing, of course, <laughs> more than the guys are. So, and then vice versa. Yeah, right. it's all subjective at the end. Yeah, of the day. but I think the agenda for for the male R and B artist should be, you know, getting the guys tapped in a bit more. Cause like I feel like it's mostly women listening. I mean, it's mostly women listening to that music. And like if you take Future, who's it, like guys love Future. Why do you think guys love Future? Cause he is talking about some crazy stuff. Like he's being toxic. Like, but he's saying the stuff that guys agree with and like you know think about the the the, the things they shouldn't say out loud <laughs> so you gotta get like an yeah yeah you gotta shit. say it like <laughs> brent fires is kind of like that a little bit yeah i love brent fires album. album exactly talks. like i feel like he's an r&b singer for the guys it's just like i feel like when an r&b a male r&b artist is like speaking to the women that's where like the savior comes but it's just like you know talk to the fellas they like that toxic stuff i think that's why brent probably had the Highest selling male R&B album last year, if I'm not mistaken. And he did yeah. it independently, too, which is very impressive. Yeah, because the girls will still listen if it sounds pretty. Right, that's a fact, too. You know? Uh, did you listen to his album? Yes, I love Brent Fires. Like, the, the skits go crazy <laughs> exactly. on that album, too, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, where he he's like, amazing. Where he, like, leaves the girl, he's on the phone. He's, the, so, he's so creative. I love him. But he's a perfect example. And if you do it right, then anybody will listen to it. Right, and hopefully we'll get you and Brent down the line one day. We're going to manifest that. Yeah, definitely, for sure. So what's next <laughs> you after this? Um, I'm about to drop my project, which mm -hmm. I'm excited about. It's a little EP, okay, but it's gonna have some some bops on there. When's it coming? Um, probably end of February. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I'll line this up with that. That's perfect. So if it yes. might be coming this week by the time y'all see this. Okay, what's, what's it called? Um, decisions. Decisions. Okay. Decisions. Yeah. Is each song gonna be like a different decision? Yeah, probably. Like that's that's kind of what I'm I'm molding right now. Right. To make it like that. Yeah. I like that. That's dope. Thank you. I like a good concept project. Thank you. So how many songs is it? Um, It's five. Five, okay. Yeah, just something cute. Okay. Something sweet. End of February. Yeah. And then what What else do you want to do this year? What else you got planned or working on? Um, oh. Tour. <laughs> I was like, what? I got her. Um, <laughs> but yeah, tour. We're working on the tour and just, you know, really feeding and massaging the, the growing fan base and the people that are just tapping in, you know? Word. And, and 
I, I definitely want to, after this project drops, like, follow it up with, like, good content and stuff to just, like, you know, massage it in there. <laughs> make it make it sit, make it soak, marinate. <laughs> well, well, I'm excited for it. Thank you. And hopefully more All-American, more other yeah, shows, things shows. like that. Yeah, shows. Yeah, I've been auditioning, doing my thing with that. So that's in the works also. Just, like, perfecting my crafts because there are, like, a bunch of different things that I'm trying to, like, massage. Like, I also want to, like, Learn how to produce soon. Nice. Because, like, I hear so many things, and even when I'm, like, working from scratch with certain producers, like, mm -hmm. I really enjoy, like, the sitting and doing it together, like, breaking mm -hmm. it apart and doing all that extra stuff. Like, I think it's really interesting, but I don't know what the, the, the kicks and stuff are called. Like, I don't know what any of it is, really. So I want to really learn about that and get into it and break it down and be able to, like, make things from scratch. Because I hear things that, like, I can't always articulate. So... Word. Well, hopefully we'll get some Journey produced freestyles <laughs> soon. Um, so by the time you're seeing this, the EP might be coming out this week or it's on the way. So make sure you go yes. check that out. Um, the freestyle is out now. So go check that out. Um, before we get out of here, anything else you want to let the people know, let the fans know, where they can follow you, all that good stuff. Now is the time to do it. This camera right here. Okay. Um, Rich Girls out now. Bad Decisions is out now. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok. YouTube, all of that stuff at Journey Montana, J O U R N E Y M O N T A N A. And shout out to Gay, you know? Yeah. Shout out to you. I appreciate you being here. Um, go run up Thank everything you. she has out now, EP on the way, or is out now by the time you'll see this, so go run yes. that up. Uh, freestyle out now. <laughs>